In this session, we are going to talk about operationalization. During part of this series, we developed this model. Moving on, after conceptualization, the next step is operationalization. Now, once the theoretical concept or construct is defined, exactly how we measure it. Now, the next step is once we have defined the construct, the next step is how do you measure it? Operationalization refers to the process of developing indicators or items for measuring these constructs. So, how do you get these indicators? You get it from existing research most of the times. But what if they are not available in existing research? Then you might have to develop your own. There are videos on the channel and you can watch them. How to search existing literature for questionnaires? This will come later in the sessions as well. For instance, if an unobservable theoretical construct that is your latent construct such as socio-economic status is defined as the level of family income, it can be operationalized using the indicator that asks the respondents the question, what is your family income? So socio-economic status, if it is conceptualized as what is included in socio-economic status? Family income. So this is what is included in socio-economic status. So how you operationalize this? Operationalize it. You simply ask this question, what is your annual income? Now, given the high level of subjectivity and impression inherent in social sciences constructs, we tend to measure most of those constructs except for few demographic constructs like age, gender, education, and income using multiple indicators. Now, you would have seen if you filled a questionnaire, let's say if somebody is asking about organizational commitment, so they normally tend to ask three to four questions. If they are asking about organizational performance, they tend to ask about three to four questions as well. For example, if they are asking about age, then obviously there is one question. Education, one simple question. A social sciences construct like organizational commitment and organizational performance or self-esteem or self-efficacy or let's say servant leadership or sustainable leadership, then you've got multiple items to measure these constructs. For instance, organizational commitment and customer loyalty. And I'm going to show you an example just now. Let's say we open a paper. So how they have operationalized these constructs. This is how rather we have operationalized them. So CSR is basically operationalized through these statements here. So one, two, up until eight statements. Service quality through these statements. Satisfaction through these statements. How do you get these statements from existing research? How to search? The videos will be coming soon. Plus there are already videos on the channel as well. Now moving on. The process allows to us to examine the closeness amongst these indicators as an assessment of their accuracy. Now this process of operationalization, what it does is it helps you examine the closeness amongst these indicators, how well these indicators are related with each other. So their item to total correlation. The closer they are, the higher is their reliability. Obviously this will be part of your analysis later. Indicators operate at empirical level in contrast to constructs which are just conceptualized at theoretical level. Now operationalization deals with empirical level whereas conceptualization deals with theory. Now the combination of indicators at empirical level representing a given construct is called a variable. Now when you measure or when you identify the indicators for a construct, it is now a variable because now it is measurable. Now, as noted earlier, variables may be independent, dependent, mediating, or moderating, depending on how they are employed in a research study. Now, also each indicator may have several attributes or levels, and each attribute may represent a value. For instance, gender variable may have two attributes, male or female. Likewise, customer satisfaction scale may be constructed to represent five attributes, whether you are strongly dissatisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, neutral, somewhat satisfied or strongly satisfied. Now this is your response scale. 
you can have other response scales as well just like you have heard about strongly disagree disagree neutral agree and strongly agree now the values of these attributes may be quantitative in this case what we do is we represent them by a number and there is an order in these numbers let's say strongly disagree is one so strongly agree is five and there is an order so normally we refer to it as quantitative now quantitative data can be analyzed using quantitative data analysis techniques just as we normally have used regression and structural equation modeling while qualitative data requires qualitative data analysis techniques just as coding or thematic analysis Note that many variables in social sciences research are qualitative even when they are represented in quantitative manner. How are they represented in quantitative manner? The response from the respondent is categorized in the form of numbers. For instance, we create customer satisfaction indicators and what we do is we assign numbers to these attributes here to the response scale and then we use sophisticated statistical tools for our quantitative data analysis normally these days we go for structural equation modeling however note that the numbers are only labels associated with the respondents personal evaluation of their own satisfaction and the underlying variable satisfaction is still qualitative even though we represented it with or we represented it in quantitative manner now indicators can be reflective or formative at lower level they are reflective by lower level i mean when it is single dimensional just like we gave the example of organizational commitment or let's say satisfaction or you can have a look at this paper as well here so this is at lower level customer satisfaction at lower level single dimensional so these are reflective lower level reflective now in another study let's say you have got csr and in that case csr is a higher order construct that is measured using four dimensions and those four dimensions each of them have got its own indicator so now this is at lower level it is reflective but at higher level it is formative now there are videos on the channel explaining these two concepts i'll share the link as well so religious is defined as a construct that measures how religious a person is then attending religious services may be a reflective indicator of religiosity a formative indicator is a measure that forms or contributes to the underlying construct now religiosity is reflected in how well or how religious the person is and that is reflected in attending religious services whereas in case of formative indicators the indicators combine and form or contribute to the underlying construct just like body mass index now if religiosity is defined as composing of a belief dimension a devotional dimension and a ritual dimension now these are three dimensions then indicators chosen to measure each of these different dimensions will be considered formative indicators so those indicators are forming these dimensions however there could be an other opinion as well let's say it is religiosity that has got three dimensions the one is belief the other one is devotional and the other one or the last one is ritual now belief has got certain indicators now they can be referred to as reflective same for devotional and same for ritual now they may be interchangeable but when these three dimensions combine they actually form religiosity so they this is formative at higher level but reflective at lower level moving on unidimensional constructs are measured using reflective indicators even though multiple reflective indicators may be used for measuring abstruse constructs such as self esteem now you are using multiple items to measure a particular construct whereas multidimensional constructs are formative now look at this religiosity has sub dimensions so these sub dimensions are forming the higher order construct so religiosity is your multidimensional construct that is measured using formative combination of multiple dimensions 
Again, this is a very good read to learn research methods for social sciences. The book is freely available on this link. The link will be shared in the description. Thank you very much.